Welcome to the latest installment of the High Pressure Podcast, the weekly air quality discussion. Today is April 28th, 2021. I'm Jeff Beamish. I'm an air quality meteorologist at Sonoma Technology in the San Francisco Bay Area. And I'm Patrick Zahn, the lead air quality forecaster for Sonoma Technology. And I'm Steve Irwin, air quality meteorologist with Sonoma Technology. First, let's start off. This is a look on April 28th from San Francisco, off in the distance, Alcatraz, along with Tiburon Island. Bit of a breeze coming off of the bay, but plenty of sunshine. And Patrick and Steve, sunshine, clear skies, part of the weather discussion today. That's right. Today, we are going to be looking at early season ozone in California. We've got a little event brewing right now. We're also going to talk about the longer term drought situation in California and what that means for fire season. So right now, as Jeff pointed out, we're looking at a beautiful day in the San Francisco Bay Area um, that's driven partly uh, by an upper level ridge of high pressure that we're going to talk about. Jeff, do you want to talk about uh, what that ridge is doing in terms of weather and air quality? Yeah, just in the general sense here, Patrick and Steve, Upper level high pressure west of the region, that tends to coincide with sinking air. Sinking air is something you need for ozone development because with sinking air, you don't get a lot of cloud cover. On top of that, your vertical mixing in the lower levels of the atmosphere is decreased. So this upper level ridge just off the Northern California and Pacific Northwest coast, uh, that's hindering mixing in the lower levels of the atmosphere. That's one of the conditions that you need for ground level ozone development. On top of that, as you saw from the camera there from uh, the San Francisco Bay, not a lot of clouds, a lot of sunshine. And on top of that, we're talking warmer temperatures. So it all adds up to air quality as we're stepping into the upcoming weekend here, AQI levels will be on the increase. Steve, wanna bring you in as we take a look at the forecast upper level pattern as we're heading into the weekend. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, um, just looking at this pattern setting up, it's really a, a summertime kind of pattern. This is a map from the um, Weatherbell website and it's showing um, pressure levels at 500 millibars. So how high above the ground we're gonna see 500 millibar pressures. And all that means is the higher the numbers are, the higher the heights are, um, the warmer the air is underneath that dome of high pressure. And so as we watch that high pressure move in from the Pacific over California, over the next couple of days, um, we're seeing levels up to 588, which is really a summertime kind of um, high pressure system. And like you said, that's going to bring warm temperatures. Um, atmospheric mixing will be minimal and the winds at the surface will be very light. So that's all going to spell um, increased production of ozone over California as we head into this weekend. As we look at maximum temperatures that are being forecast heading into the weekend, uh, today it's already looking like mid 80s under sunny skies and so we'll probably see the first bit of uh, moderate AQI levels in the Sacramento region. However, heading into tomorrow, high temperatures climb into the low 90s, which is um, pretty much your typical setup for high ozone development in the Sacramento region that continues into the day on Friday. Um, and even into the weekend, however, we do expect there could be some um, improvement in ozone this weekend just as wind directions shift and that ridge moves a little bit further off to the south. Jeff is looking at the forecast right now. Jeff, do you want to talk about those regional forecasts? Yeah, let's kind of step through it here, starting in the San Francisco Bay Area, sparetheair.org, the Bay Area Air Quality District website for official air quality forecasts. And as we're stepping into the weekend here, tomorrow, Thursday, this would be April 29th, uh, starting to see AQI levels creeping up a little bit as you're heading into the eastern zone of the Bay Area, along with the coast and central bay. By Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, moderate AQI levels in the forecast, primarily for ozone. That would be for the northern zone, the North Bay from Santa Rosa to Vallejo, Nevado, and San Rafael. That also includes the Santa Clara Valley, San Jose, 
and also into the eastern zone. So we're talking to Tri-Valley, Concord, and on up into the Delta. Let's shift the focus of attention, if we can, uh, down the coast a little bit into Southern California. And Patrick, uh, you have some uh, real intimate knowledge of ozone formation and ozone forecasting uh, down in the Los Angeles Basin. Right, so we're looking at a pretty similar situation in terms of the overall weather pattern for both Northern and Southern California. So they are also going to experience this upper level ridging. And this is looking at tomorrow's forecast for ozone. They're also gonna have light onshore winds. So you notice looking at this zone here that some of the counties or some of the regions uh, on the Western portion right out by the coast are actually green in the forecast for tomorrow. But as you move farther inland into the LA basin into the Riverside area, San Bernardino, then you start to see yellow and orange. So that's unhealthy for sensitive groups. That means the AQI forecast is over 100, and that is for ozone. And again, it's all these right ingredients coming together for this ozone, early season ozone event. Warm temperatures, I think the temperatures are gonna be in the mid 90s down there. Uh, light onshore winds, so you're getting pollutant transport from the LA area inland into, like I said, San Bernardino, Redlands, Loma Linda, Riverside. But then you also see that there's, it, that area is surrounded by high terrain. There are mountains basically all the way around that area. So that's blocking the air from being transported any farther out to the east. So the pollutants get transported inland and it sort of bakes in the hot sun and you get this high ozone. This is a very typical pattern, uh, especially for the summer where it's cleaner out towards the coast and then some ozone buildup inland. So uh, this is the forecast from the South Coast Air Quality Management District. So that's a quick look at the air quality forecast for tomorrow in the LA area, but I want to shift back up north into the Sacramento region. We've uh, fast forwarded here to Saturday and we're looking at a little bit, a little change in the situation here. On Saturday, the upper level ridge weakens, and with that, the onshore winds strengthen. So you can see this uh, map from windy.com. You can see the indication of some onshore winds through the San Francisco Bay region. Those winds are going to make it all the way into Sacramento, and eventually, those winds will help to disperse pollutants. Um, but really that first day of light onshore winds, we often see a pattern where the pollutant buildup in Sacramento really just gets transported into the foothills to the east of the Sacramento region. So we might have one additional day of high ozone in the Sacramento region, but probably in uh, the foothill regions, Placer County, El Dorado County. And that again is a pretty typical summertime pattern that we've seen for multi-day ozone events. All right, shifting the focus now to the ongoing drought situation in the Golden State. This is the latest U.S. drought monitor that was released on April 20th, 2021. This typically gets released weekly, every Thursday. And the takeaway message from this is we are in some bad shape when it comes to the drought here in California. The orange indicating severe drought, the red indicating extreme drought, and in far eastern California, right along the Nevada border, that is the worst of the drought categories, exceptional drought. In all, 96%, almost 97% of California is in moderate drought status, while 85% of the Golden State is in severe drought and almost 50%, almost half of California as of April 20th, 2021 is sitting in extreme drought status. So we walk through and talk a bit about what's the reason behind the drought and how it could play in to the forecast as we're heading into the summer in relation to wildfire development. I want to start with this gentleman. This would be the yearly precipitation anomaly map for California. This is either how much of a surplus or deficit we are running for rainfall here in California. And this map indicates, notice a lot of this very light pink around the Bay Area up toward Northern California, the Sierra. That is indicating that rainfall is 
10 inches below normal or even more. And we've only seen roughly about 30 to 50% of our normal precipitation over the last year. Let's go ahead and bring in Steve. And Steve, it's really shaping up to be uh, a, a hot, a dry summer, and one that could be very dangerous in relation to wildfires. Something we talk about as meteorologists looking at uh, when you have such a large, expansive area of drought, um, there's a feedback mechanism where drought begets more drought. And so if you have drought conditions, often um, it's going to force more drought conditions just because of all the dry, warm air over the region. Um, will create more of those ridges of high pressure aloft like we had seen up in uh, the Sacramento region coming up this upcoming weekend. And so as we look ahead to summer, um, just looking at how big this drought is over the West right now, we would think that there is a pretty good chance of uh, this continuing on. And indeed, if we go to the Climate Prediction Center, they are forecasting above normal temperatures. This is for the period from May through July of 2021. Uh, very high chances, 60 to 70 percent chances of above normal temperatures over the desert southwest and really over much of the country. Um, it looks like this summer is going to be warmer than normal um, and partly, you know, over the southwest that's contributed to by the ongoing drought there. And this map is from the National Interagency Fire Center. Just looking at where are conditions going to be ripe for fire development. And right now, um, as we look into midsummer uh, for the month of July, the red coloring is showing above normal potential for significant wildfires across much of California. Um, there's a lot of dry fuel around because of the lack of rain and the lack of moisture that we've referred to. And so all that fuel is just sitting and waiting. Now, the things that are easier to forecast is how dry it's going to be uh, what's harder to predict are the ignitions. So what would cause the fires? And so last year we saw um, in the San Francisco area, lightning caused fires. Um, and certainly there's always that potential going through the summer. Um, but then there are also the human impacts of um, fires being caused by car accidents or um, other situations. And those things cannot be predicted. And so we can just say, it's drier than normal. It looks like it's going to be warmer than normal. The fuels will be ripe for burning. Um, what we don't know is if those ignitions will happen, um, and especially to the level that they did last year. So as Steve mentioned, we have a lot of dry fuels. We're also looking at above average temperatures. So those ingredients are there for potentially contributing to uh, wildfires. We also need to watch out for high wind events. In the past, those have contributed to fire ignitions via downed power lines. They've also contributed to rapid fire spread. So we will be on the lookout for these other ingredients that might contribute to rapid wildfire growth, and then the transport or accumulation of smoke from those fires that could impact air quality, not just in California, but across the country. I think one thing that it, that we should point out here is we are talking about the uh, wildfire danger as we're heading into the driest months of the year, which as you know, if you're living in California, you know that as we head into the late spring and into the summer and in the early portion of fall, we just don't get a lot of rain here in the Golden State. Now, it, it's hard to predict exactly how big a wildfires are going to develop because we just don't know that. There's a human element, as Steve mentioned, to this, but at least the potential for above normal wildfire activity, ignitions, um, that certainly does exist as we're heading into the summer and likely into the early fall as well. Again, our rainfall deficit here, uh, Bay Area specific, is at least 10 inches below normal, possibly even more than that. The fuels are very, very dry, and any wildfire that does develop under the right conditions could get uh, very large in a very short amount of time. That does it for this week's edition of the Air Quality Discussion on the High Pressure Podcast. Make sure to give us a follow, by the way, on Twitter. We are at High Pressure Pod, or to see some of the amazing air quality work that we do at Sonoma Technology, you can head on over to www.sonomatech.com. I'm Jeff Beamish. I'm Patrick Zahn. And I'm Steve Irwin. 
Thanks for watching and listening to the weekly air quality discussion on the High Pressure Podcast.